the other thing I can do is uh, I can take any of these pictures and uh, I can make them bigger. I can just take my fingers and I can, we call it the pinch. And so I can just move them further apart and stretch the image. In 2007, this little gesture on the first iPhone kept people breathless. Now, 15 years later, a pinch to zoom is a mandatory gesture on every touch system. Today, we're going to implement it in Swift UI. My name is Pete, and this, this is Swift and Tips. Pinch to zoom is known as magnification gesture in Swift UI. In fact, this is one of the five gestures supported by the framework right now. Others are tap gesture, rotation gesture, drag gesture, and long press gesture. I will leave a link in the description with a playlist if you want to learn more about them. Okay, let's implement magnification gesture in the following demo. We have this gallery app showing soccer pictures. If we tap in any of those pictures, a new view will appear showing the image in full screen. However, we cannot do zooming or anything. Let's explore the code a little bit. Here we have the gallery view. It's a simple view showing the images in a lazy P grid. Check out the link in the description if you want to learn more about lazy grids in Swift UI. The important code for this demo is found in image detail view. Let's jump there. The code is just showing the image in full screen and nothing else. Let's create then a magnification gesture for the image. In order to add a new gesture to this view, we need to use gesture modifier and create a magnification gesture object. That's fine, but let's create a computer property to keep the gesture code cleaner. If we run the code again, everything is still static. If you have followed with this gesture series, you already know that just adding the gesture object won't produce anything. We have to use the gesture states to mutate the views state. Magnification gesture has three types of events, updating, unchanged, and unended. Let's see updating method first. Updating will report to a closure the latest state of the gesture. In this case, the gesture state provided will be a scale CG float value that represents the magnification of the object. Updating requires two parameters, a gesture state object that will store the status of the gesture and the closure reporting the current state of the gesture. For the first parameter, we need to provide a scale value that will tell the view how large it should be. Let's add a scale effect to our view. Right now, the scale is twice the size of the image, but we need to dynamically update this view to produce the zoom effect. This is the job for the gesture events. In this case, the gesture state is the scale property. Let's decorate it using gesture state property wrapper. Great, now it can be passed as parameter for updating. Cool, now let's add code inside the closure. The closure is providing three parameters, the current state reported, a reference to or view scale that we can update directly through this variable, and a transaction context. For example, you can update animations here. Now we just need to update the past state to the current state and that's all. Great, it works, but you might notice that once we release the fingers, the image goes to the default scale. This is expected. Updating will track the gesture state, but once the gesture ends, it will restore the state to the default position. This is cool for some situations, but in this case, we want to keep the scaling even if we end the gesture. Fortunately, there is another alternative to build this, using the other two events provided by magnification gesture, unchanged and unended. Unchanged, like updating, will report the state of your gesture every time SwiftUI got a change in the scale. However, it won't restore anything once the gesture ended. Actually, when the gesture ends, unended will capture that event and you can do anything like restoring the state to the fall or something else. 
In fact, you can see updating has a default on change and on ended combined. Okay, let's get rid of updating for now and use the other two events. And update the scale during unchanged. Don't forget to change gesture state to a regular view state property wrapper. Let's run the app. If we end the zoom, the view keeps the scale. Very nice. Hmm, this looks weird. Can you figure out what's going on here? The problem that many of you, including myself, could found working with this kind of gesture is that the state provided in the events is a scale relative to the current zoom scale and not for your views scale. What I mean is that once you release the pinch to zoom and start over, the first scale value provided from on change will be one and more or less depending if you are zooming in or out, no matter what is the current views scale. And if your views scale is 2.0, then you will see that jump from 2.0 to 1 thanks to our current logic. How can we fix that? Sounds tricky, but it is not too complicated actually. First, we have to store not only one, but two scales, the scale already updating the view, and another one to save the last scale provided by the event. Now with this last scale, we will calculate a delta between the current zoom scale and the last scale. This delta is the correct factor that will increase or decrease the views scale. Then we have to update the last scale with the current state. And lastly, once the gesture ends, we have to restore the last scale to 1.0. This will correct the speed of the delta change. Now let's try again. Great, the zoom is finally working correctly. Finally, let's fix the limits for the scale. Right now, you can zoom in and out wherever you want, but normally in photo apps, the scale is limited by a range. For our demo, let's use the minimum scale of 1.0 and maximum of 5.0. Those limits will be validated once the gesture ends and not during the change. Let's also create a function for the code inside unchanged. Let's run the app again. It works. but the validation makes the image transition choppy. Let's fix that wrapping validate scale limits inside a with animation function. Let's try one more time. Nice. Can you see the difference now? One more thing you might notice already. You cannot move the image around and it is always zooming in and out the center of the image. You cannot zoom in the face of this person, for example. This is because we require a drag gesture to move it and work with both gestures at the same time to produce a pan gesture effect. I will leave that for another video when we learn how to work with simultaneous gestures in Swift UI. So, Stay tuned. Remember that you can learn more about SwiftUI in the playlist I shared for you in the description below. That's all for me, everyone. Thank you so much and have a great day.
Hey, and speaking of the first iPhone, let me show you one of my treasures right now. Actually, there are two. One is the iPhone 4, and the other guy here is the original iPhone. This piece of art is made by Grid Studio, and I have the fortune to have one of the limited editions with me. This device, you know, made a whole revolution in our industry. And I'm glad to have it here because it's my closest approach to the original iPhone. What do you think will be the next revolution?